Today, we're looking at Fanatical's Backstage Mystery Bundle. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're looking at Fanatical's Backstage Mystery Bundle. I got a little carried away there. Um, that was lame. <laughs> so, the Fanatical Backstage Mystery Bundle. Somebody asked me, why do you do these bundles? Because we spend so much money on equipment to build computers. And I know everybody likes playing the latest and the greatest game, but some of us don't have a ton of money to spend after we spend six, seven, eight, 12, 15, $2,000 on a computer. And we still wanna have a variety of games. So you can get 10 games for a very cheap price. Now, are some of them duds? Yeah, some of them are duds. Are some of them really good games? Yes. There's one game I found in one of these bundles called 911 Operator that I love. And I wouldn't have never found it if I wouldn't have started doing these bundles because I'm not as adventurous with my money as some other people just trying games and I don't like it. So I can spend $6.99 on a game to so how much this bundle costs. 10 games for $6.99. I'm willing to spend that for 10 games. And if I find one game that I really liked, I only spent $6.99 on it. I play these games for 30 to 40 minutes. In my opinion, if a game can't catch my interest in 30 to 40 minutes, I'm not gonna play it. You may like these games that I don't like, or you may hate the games that I love, but it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to get invested in a game. The first game. The first game is a game called Cook, Serve, Delicious. It is a restaurant sim game. Think of if you know Flo's Diner and Papa Pizzeria having a baby. And that's this, it is a strategy game. You start off being a restaurant manager. You come in, you have to plan your menu of at least four, three different items to begin with. Each thing that you cook has a certain way you prepare it. Some things you just add like salt or pepper or ketchup or mustard to. Other things you have to go through a process like pouring a beer or pouring wine or making a hamburger. You have to go through the process of cooking it. Now the game, you work from, I think, I wanna say from nine to 10 at night. You know, you'll have a steady stream of customers beginning and then you get the first rush hour of the day and that's lunchtime. And they just bombard you with people and you have to make as many orders as fast as possible. Then you have a little lull period. And then afterwards, around after work, you get hit with another rush hour. And it just, it, it's a really simple game to play, but it seems to be a hard game to master because you have so many different parts because you'll be cooking and then you have to go and clean the toilet or you have to go and take the trash out. It's just you working in the beginning. It's a very, I'm not gonna say complicated game, but it, it can get complicated depending on how many items you have, what kind of items the customer is ordering, how complex the item is to make. Overall, this game is a good game for people who like that kind of restaurant sim game. The strategy of picking foods that the customers like and not going to what they call uh, menu rot, having a, the same item on your menu for more than two days. It forces you to play different food items um, to, to make your customers happy. So you can't just do, like I was trying to do, corn dogs and pretzels where I just, uh, here's mustard and ketchup and here's some salt and take it with some beer. Oh, well, we, we want more different things. Okay. On Steam, this game got a 10 out of 10. The cost was $9.99. And I think I'm going to give it a 3.5 uh, because I it's not my favorite game, but I can see myself after I get a rhythm and actually get into it, get lost in this game. The next game. The next game is a game called Ballpoint Universe Infinite. It is a hand-drawn style game. It's a very unique artwork. It's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up like Airwolf, if you ever played that with the helicopter. You have this vessel that has a gun and it has a, a, a auto knife. So if you get close to your enemies, you can go and I know this looks weird. If you get close to your enemies, you can go and the knife will automatically attack them without you having to do it while you're shooting. I'll put it on the screen, but it, 
attacks it. In between your actions, you are navigating the world. It, it is a war going on between the doodles and the logicians. It's a battle to see who's gonna take over that world. The logicians wanna turn all the doodles into their boring selves, and the doodles don't want that to happen. Your ship is upgradable. You can get different guns. You can get different uh, automatic knives, and it, it just helps you improve more and more. This game, the art style is not something I've seen before and it is unique and it's not unique in the way it's like oh you're 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 unique I, I i like that trying to be fake positive it's unique in a way that the art style kind of draws you into that universe and for it all to be hand drawn it's i like it a lot i'm also a fan of the shoot 'em up genre just because i just like to just press a button and just have a bunch of bullets just fly that's just what I like doing. And if that is something you like, if you like a, a shoot 'em up style game, a side scrolling shoot 'em up style game, this is uh, one of the best I've played in a while. On Steam, this game got a nine out of 10. The cost is $3.99 and I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I think it's a really good game. The only thing I think could be better is the movement of the character in between the shoot 'em ups you have to move them with the mouse i'm not a big fan of moving characters with just mouse only that's it that's my only gripe with the game the next game the next game is a game called per chang i think i'm saying that per chang per chang we're gonna say per chang it is a physics based puzzle game where you're trying to get balls in a hole which hey that sounds simple enough it isn't balls drop from this ball dropper i guess and you're trying to use levers and fans to get it into the hole so sometimes you just actuate the levers and they have to just change directions to get the ball in the hole simple enough then it gets a little more complicated that you have to take some of the flippers and actually flip the balls in the hole it's even better uh, it gets a little more complicated but it's still manageable then you have to incorporate fans into it so you gotta blow the balls in the right direction so now you have two different colors. You have a red color and a blue color and you can use different keys to control the actions of the different colors. So if you have uh, four items that, that you can move like levers and flippers and two of them are blue and two of them are red, well, whenever you do something to the blue, then the blue actuates and do whatever it does and then the red doesn't do anything it gets a little more complicated now so now you got to do double action some sometimes you have to flip two levers independently of each other so you have one to flip it up and land and another one to flip it into the hole which i mean it sounds simple but when they're coming when you have balls dropping that you have to flip and also balls that hadn't really got to the point yet. It gets a little complicated. My only drawback to this game is there's no sound. There's no music. It's just dead silence. I don't know if that's a design choice to try to immerse you into the game more or a minimalist approach, but it wasn't my favorite thing about the game. Overall, I think it's a really good physics-based puzzle game. The physics, they got really tuned in. I think it's really good. On Steam, this had no rating. It only had two reviews total. So I noticed that on Apple and Google, this game had a rating. So on Apple, it got the App Store, got four out of five. On the Google Play Store, it got 3.6 out of five. And the cost is $7.99. And I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of five. It's a very fun game. Um, the, the sound kind of threw me off. Uh, I would like, like, I don't know, some blips and bloops and beeps, something. The next game. The next game is a game called Chime Sharp. Chime Sharp is a, the best way I can describe Chime Sharp is a puzzle game with music. Let me read to you the Steam page about what it is. I think that's the best way to do this justice. The best sentence in this about game that describes Chime Sharp is the only way to discover Chime is to play it. But if you want a glimpse, consider what it might feel like to cross Tetris, a music sequencer, and a hypnotic dream about your favorite pop song. 
okay? It's a puzzle game and each level you have the different shapes. Think of Tetris and you have different levels that have different shapes. So different shapes to make your different blocks. And each block you make it turns into a note. So you have a beat timer thing that goes through and each time it goes over the box it hits a beat and it goes over it a couple of times and then it erases and you can just try to keep the beat going if you don't then the level's over uh this game uh isn't good it just isn't it's it's bootleg tetris at best uh the music is okay the gameplay itself is frustrating because you can't really come up with a strategy because each level has different shapes and so you'll have to replay the level to try to come up with strategies. And it'd be okay if it was like a area and in this area you have this shapes and when you move on to the next area, you have some more shapes. It's a little frustrating as a game. I didn't like it at all, um, but it may be something you like if you like those types of frustrating Tetris-like games. I'm not one of those people. On Steam, this game got a six out of 10. The cost is $9.99 and I gave it a one out of five because it's, it's not a good game. The last game of this part, the fifth game of this series, because it's 10 games in the series, is a game called Grip Combat Racing. And Grip is an anti-gravity combat racing game. What does that mean? So you have these vehicles that once you hit the a green orange orb on the track, you can have grip to go on the wall and on the ceiling. So it kind of, so everybody has this that you're racing against. So that's cool that you can race people. You, know, you could pass them on the wall or pass them on the ceiling and, and do that. But what takes this game to another level are these light green orbs that are floating that are like power-ups that you get in Mario Kart or things like that. And these power-ups, you can have a whole myriad of different power-ups. In the beginning, they give you a boost, they give you a shield, they give you a missile and like a Gatling gun or something like that. And you use it against or to help you do better in the race. This game does a fantastic job of immersing you in the action. At one point I felt like I was in the game that I was going so fast it, my heart skipped a beat. It was that good of a game that it just does a good job of conveying speed. The way it handles the physics and the way you stick and how long you stick to the wall or the ceiling or or the tracks and how you interact with those. In this game, you can have a different lap and a different race and a different way you attack the track or attack your opponents and, and not be bored. It's just that dynamic of a game. But as far as how it handles speed and how it handles the combat it's a very very unique game and i really liked it a whole bunch on steam this game got a 9 out of 10 the cost is 29.99 and i'm giving it 5 out of 5 uh, one because it's a racing game i can actually play and two it's a very fun fun game to play so let's go ahead and add up the cost and see where we're at as far as getting a good value cook serve delicious 9.99 <laughs> Guess what guys, we're in value territory. Already in value territory. Ballpoint Universe Infinite, $3.99. Per Chain, $7.99. Chime Sharp, $9.99. And Grip Comeback Racing, $29.99, which gives us a total of $61.95. I think that's a fantastic deal. We got five more games to go to and see if we actually got a great deal, which, you know, given the looks of it, it looks like it's becoming a pretty good deal. That's it. Thank you guys for joining me. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like this type of video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.